Hello everyone, it's James from Keeping It Anime, and today I'll be giving you my thoughts on episode 92 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Variants. So, to start off with, I just want to mention that this episode was a good episode. Now some people might say, why good? Why not fantastic? Well, the reason for that is because throughout watching this episode, I just had that really weird feeling that kind of put me off enjoying it 100%. Let me explain. So, we've got a villain in this episode that tries to act like a villain. And it comes off horribly. Like, this character's acting skills are just awful. And it's just that weird sort of vibe slash sensation of this character trying to act evil. I don't know, it just downed the enjoyment altogether for me personally. But that being said, let me give you a bit more context in what I'm talking about. So this episode starts off by Lightning contacting Kusanagi and saying, Right, you dual playmaker, you win, you get Jin's consciousness back. If you draw, I destroy it. If you lose, I destroy it. And this basically leads to Kusanagi being the villain and playmaker having to fight his friend which he doesn't want to do. However, Kusanagi is completely happy with it because it means that he can get his brother back, which is what his character has been striving towards ever since the show began. And he's just flat out believed a bad guy in Lightning. Now, so like I said, a villain trying to act like a villain, being Kusanagi, just it didn't give me that villainous vibe. Instead, it gave me that sort of vibe of, right, I've got to be bad, let me act like I'm evil, but I'll help you in one way or another. And that is what Kusanaki does. He supports a Playmaker in ways that other people can't. And the fact as well that before Jin went, um, Kusanaki went into the Reigns, he actually sent code to hacking Link Frames to the Knights of Hanoi. And I could be wrong, but did, did Vyra always have short hair? I always thought she had long hair. I'm probably wrong with that, but anyway. We see Vyra, we see Faust, and Gnome. We see those three from the Knights of Hanoi, and they're getting code from Kusanagi before he obviously left. So obviously, they're still having an interaction and they're still wanting to support Revolver. Okay, good. Um, Bowman had some interesting dialogue in this duel and that was the fact is he's talking to Lightning and saying okay are you really going to destroy Jin's consciousness? And Lightning agrees and says yes because this is a win-win situation for Team Lightning and yeah I agree if uh, Kusanagi wins, Playmaker's out. If Playmaker wins, Kusanagi's out. But Playmaker is mentally sort of scarred. And that's basically what they're trying to do. They're trying to mentally scar Playmaker um, into making him not very usable in future episodes. Okay, let's talk about play. Okay, so let's talk about Kusanagi's deck. Now people were there saying, why don't we give him a hot dog truck deck or a hot dog base deck, food base, and that would have been fun. I mean, I thought maybe vehicle roids would have been a good idea. You know, have an homage to GX. But no, we got something called Code Breakers. And I'm not going to lie, I actually like the designs for this archetype. And their skills are pretty good as well. So let me explain. Codebreaker's his skill. Uh, when Codebreaker Swordsman links up with a monster of the opponent's side of the field, he can special summon a monster from his graveyard, which is a Link Breaker, and apply it to a Link Marker on his opponent's side. This obviously being Deco Talker would normally gain points uh, power by being linked. 
to a cut. However, this clan, not clan, sorry, talking about Vanguard now, oops, this archetype, the Code Breakers, actually flips that and makes it so any attack gained is deducted. So Deco Talker ends up losing health, and he also has skills to keep the card on the field. So where Playmaker's classic kind of, I'm going to activate it from my graveyard technique, which he uses a lot in the series, doesn't come into effect. Which is a good way, and Kusanagi states that he knows Playmaker's deck better than anybody else. And yeah, that's true. As well as the fact is obviously his deck deals um, effect damage thanks to um, a trap guard. But here's my issue. Playmaker obviously does not want to hurt his friend. He wants his friend to get um, his brother back, so he wants Kusanagi to have Jin back because he's been trying to help Kusanagi in that way. But at the same time, he knows if he lose, it's the same as like dying for him because of the lost instant. And Playmaker, he's a character that has not been developed a lot, and he hasn't really shown a lot of emotion in this series. Like, I'm not going to lie, when you go back to the previous episode where he was fighting um, Akira, and Aoi was watching, if that was like in this scenario, like, say Akira wanted to get Aoi back. Playmaker would probably just completely wreck Akira in terms of dueling him. He wouldn't be like, Oh no, I don't want to duel you. I don't want you to, to vanish. Oh, you're my friend. So, that's the issue I have. Yes, okay, he's friends with Kusanagi. But you can kind of say he has that sort of... Maybe not a friendship, but a relationship with him and... Akira, as well as the fact is he's obviously friends with Blue Maiden and Aoi. So, you know, a little bit weird in terms of character treatment. Right, one last thing I want to touch upon before I go into speculation and prediction. So, at the beginning of this episode, Bowman has um, these weird symbols on his back after absorbing uh, Blue Maiden and Aqua. Now, we see a blue symbol, and we see a brown symbol. So does this mean they already have Earth? Because obviously the blue symbol is going to be Aqua. But, did they already have data for Earth? Or did Aqua have Earth's data because of Crystal Heart? That's just something I didn't really get. But, you know, maybe you can tell me down in the comment section below whether or not the Crystal Heart card had Earth's data, which meant that Bowman now has Earth, Ignis inside of him, and Aqua inside of him. I don't know. Hopefully that's not the case, because that would just be like taking a small amount of data and then getting the whole thing. Seems a bit weird. But that's the last thing I wanted to touch upon. This episode was good. We had some okay animation. Like, at the start of the episode... Emma looked young as anything. Um, uh, Playmaker's face looked a bit young at times. And we had some good character development from... Uh, I wouldn't say Playmaker was a good character development, it was kind of weird. But he had development nevertheless. We had Bowman developing in character, we had Akira developing in character. Because he was dead set on... Uh, using Celtex resources to just get Aoi back instead of actually helping everybody get out of the sword art situation that they've currently got now. Um, and we also have Kusanagi. Four characters showing a bit of development in this episode. Which is good. I like that. So overall this episode was good. You might have really enjoyed it and if you did, good for you. But like I said, the whole Kusanagi trying to be evil um, just didn't really sit well with me, which downed the enjoyment altogether, for me, personally. So speculation. What do I think is going to happen in future episodes? 
Well, here's what I'd like to happen. I want Playmaker to actually win. Yeah, I know, he's never lost, and this could be a good time to lose. But if he loses, he's dead. I's dead. Um, supposedly. And I want Kusanagi to win against... Oh, no, no, sorry. Playmaker to win against Kusanagi. But it's a bit of a struggle, and he has that mental sort of scarring as such um, in the process of doing so. Which leaves him out of dueling for a few episodes. But then just as Lightning is about to destroy Jin's consciousness, I want Bowman to step in and destroy, um, battle Lightning. Leading to Bowman beating Lightning, absorbing Lightning, because we know that Bowman has to absorb Lightning at some point. But I can't see Lightning just going, Oh, okay, now you can absorb me, that's fine. No. I think there needs to be a duel between the two, to just to prove who's the sort of real antagonist. And this would be a good way to transition into that. Because then what we could have afterwards is Bowman with um, Lightning, Aqua, and potentially Earth inside of him, going up against Soulburner, winning, and then getting um, Flame and Windy, battling Revolver, and winning, and then obviously it will lead to Yusaku getting over his mental trauma, and then beating Bowman. That would be how I think this series is going to go down. Because we see Bowman curious about whether or not Lightning is going to go through with destroying Jin's consciousness, and we were reminded today that Bowman is based off of Playmaker. And Playmaker wants to help Jin. So, that would mean that somewhere deep down in Bowman's mainframe, or programming, whatever you want to say, will have Bowman wanting to save Jin. That's a bit of a stretch, but it's what I think might happen. Otherwise, there was no point in Bowman stating to Playmaker in this episode reminding him that he was a copy of Playmaker to begin with. But like I said, that's just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you agree disagree with me? But other than that guys, that's going to wrap this video up. Like the video if you liked the video. Dislike the video if you dislike the video. Subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me. And until next time guys, keep it anime.